All right, guys. AC system is uh, evac is uh, evacuated, recovered, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to put it through a vacuum for about two minutes, just so uh, whenever you open up the lines on an AC system, even after you evacuate it, there's always still. It's like the charge kind of warms up because there's more room for it to expand. I guess is the best way I can say it. You always get a <sighs> a huff at you or something, and I don't like getting sprayed with AC dye and oil and all that jazz. It's not the most fun in the world, to be honest. But we're gonna see what we can do, and I gotta kind of make some access to get at the uh, sensor. High pressure cutout switch, as it were, so I can swap it out. That should do it. Oh yeah, there it is. Let's disconnect the connector, and we shouldn't have to reconnect that or reuse that connector at all anymore. So now, spin the uh, the three wire sensor off. It's got the little O-ring. That's good. Trader valve. See, and there's our issue right there. We've got new wires, a two wire, old wires, a three wire, and you can see the size difference, and that's what our adapter is for. So all we do Take it out like a tire valve stem. That's it, that's all. The whole reason why the Schrader valve is in there is just so you can service that sensor without disabling the AC. See, I'm introducing a leak right now, and you can hear the compressor uh, vacuum pump just working away. Now we can stop it. So, Schrader valve is out. Now I can screw the first part of the sensor fitting adapter on. Then I can screw on the second part. Hopefully we maintain a good seal. And we'll be laughing. That's that. So now I can set the AC compressor on, or the AC uh, recharge machine to vacuum again. And while it's doing that, pick this nice little gem up at the scrapyard today for a song. Thankfully, they didn't want me to dance. And we just plug him on. And now all I got to do is take the wire that I have run in the dash out and connect one end of that wire, or to the sensor, sorry, one end of the sensor. Yes, this was just literally looped through the door, and I hate doing that, but... It was just damn hot. That's all I can say is it was damn hot. I see. That's new noises. I love new noises. So all we're going to do for now is I'm going to run this, tuck it up inside the fan shroud area, keep it out of the way of everything. Length right there. So 
so far we're holding a good vacuum. Now, AC systems are tricky. They will show you a good vacuum, meaning that you've got a great seal, but as soon as you put pressure in them, then you'll find the other leak. Uh, you get tripped up on that several times in the middle of diagnosing. So air conditioning systems are basically an exercise in patience. Now, since this is a one-way switch, like open-close, that's it. I don't have to worry about polarity. And we can go... There. Now I want it to be at least at least semi permanent. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it like that. More there. Throw a little bit of shrink tube on it. Provided this works perfectly, I'm going to uh, go back and I'll zip tie the wire out of the way. I don't like having it hanging around. Uh, and I'll probably loom it as well. The other wire is going to go to a ground. So you just take a little look around your engine bay. Usually there's plenty of spots for a usable ground. And I am probably just going to go right off, yeah, right off my uh, cruise control, I think. Yeah, just grab a wrench and a ground eyelet. Doesn't gotta be fancy. Okay, make our ground connection. As redneck as I am, I don't like having a jumper wire with a gator clip to run my air conditioning. I mean, call me crazy, but I am at least semi-professional some days.
Solder and shrink tube, the only way to go. Now I have heard there are some like, if you're doing some wiring that is right beside some very, very hot components like turbos and exhaust and you just can't get enough heat shielding on them, then there are times when you just use a little steel sleeve crimp and uh, crimp it and shrink tube it. And that could very well be. I haven't had the situation myself, so I can't guesstimate on it, but it sounds plausible because solder will melt. I mean, it will melt. But for most everything I've ever done, solder and shrink tube the whole way. So you can shrink tube as well. And I like using the double walled shrink tube, not the super cheap stuff you get at the, at the bargain parts stores double wall usually has a sealer in it and it's going to be that much better a repair longevity and anything in the engine bay anyway I mean heck I, I solder and shrink tube stuff under the dash just because it's more peace of mind for me so uh, considering that when I decided I'd rewire the whole engine bay in the Dodge Dart and most of the under the dash harness yeah she uses a lot of solder and a lot of shrink tube and a lot of time to do every single connector but I wouldn't have it any other way because I like mileage I like dependability and the last thing I want to have is be driving down the road and one of my uh, connections was bare or the black tape wrapped around it or something it just wasn't enough to catch fire and you know we don't want that sad story I don't want to come to you guys and say well it was fun but my car is a crispy little rocket now not my flavor, boys. So, having done all that, come around front here. Right down in here, this is where our sensor is. So, tuck the wires out of the way, connect it, run this guy up here again. Because all the shielding and ducting is important. I used to think, oh, I don't need that stuff. But this actually takes care of directing more air towards the radiator. And on days like this, you want every bit of it you can get. So there we go. What was that, like four minutes? Five, six. It's holding a vacuum. So now we're going to recharge it. Thankfully, the label is still here. 1.875 pounds, so 1.828. We were sitting at about 180 pounds, give or take 185. Low sides at 30, that's textbook pretty much. I'm gonna go around you, just hang out and watch the gauges. Gonna rev up the engine a bit. There we go, we got up to about 225, and it should drop down to about 180 again and kick back in. Yeah, it's hanging out, compressor's engaged. All right, we're happy. So yeah, close hood. Well guys, that's it in a nutshell. Follow me for more baking tips. <laughs> but seriously though, uh, I enjoy making these little short videos with you guys. So uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I really just wanted uh, a simple Dakota. Like it's still fuel injected. It still has all the uh, you know factory parameters and goodies. The engine runs just fine. The rest of the computer systems work perfectly. But at the end of the day, uh, 
by changing the computer, I caused an issue, and this is the fix for the issue. This is, well, I don't know if you call it a Band-Aid or a fix, but it should be a permanent fix when everything's all said and done. So at the end of the day, I'll let you know. Uh, what else can I say? Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.